Today's topic, important financial considerations for academic physicians. Truly, this is one of my favorite topics and partially it's because one, I love analyzing different uh, options for our clients, but two, there's a lot of benefits on the academic side of medicine that I, I think sometimes are overlooked. Um, and these are many topics that we talk through, right, when we're analyzing those different decisions and we're blessed to work with many academic physicians. So we get to see all these in true form. So today we're gonna walk through some of those um, benefits that sometimes they're not listed out exactly in that salary, but they're there. So that's all coming up next, stay tuned. All right, first up, I'm gonna give some air quotes out here on lower salary. So while we understand that's one of the biggest items with the academic world is that it may come with a lower salary, uh, but we also need to plug in the other benefits that can make that lower salary very close to maybe that private world or maybe even better, depending on what, what your goals are. Uh, and the, the first main topic though is public service loan forgiveness. One of the best parts of working with many academic uh, roles in the in the medicine world is public service loan forgiveness. Usually, there's not any uh, gray area here. Usually, it's hey, we're a 501c3, you're good to go. And this number now, when you plug in this number, right, you're you're talking most likely for for most physicians, right, hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have clients that are literally seven figures, seven figures of debt will be forgiven with public service loan forgiveness. Assuming you know we, we do everything right, we, we, we get everything organized the way that we're supposed to. That's a pretty big number, right? Now I know that the beauty of being a physician too, we're not looking at you know a fifty thousand dollars salary, so the numbers are already bigger. But still, I mean that that is one thing that you have to plug in right at the start, right? And I know public service loan forgiveness can have its own stress to it, and, and none of us still to this day trust the system, even though it, it does show that it is working. But when you plug in those numbers, right? that could be a very large number. So when you're looking at that academic role and you see the salary number listed, don't forget to think through your student loans. In particular, don't forget to plug in what public service loan forgiveness could look like for you and, and, and for your family as well. Next big factor on your side for most larger academic hospitals is retirement savings. Um, heck, we still even see pensions, pensions every now and then. Um, not too many of them, but they're out there on the academic side. We, we don't really see that too much on the, uh, the private side unless they have a unique defined benefit plan set up. But just the overall retirement savings could be a lot healthier. Um, sometimes you'll see something called a 401A, uh, where essentially they're putting money in for your, you're putting like a forced contribution, um, but it doesn't count against your other numbers. So then you maybe just get a 401A, max out a 403B at 19.5, and then max out a 457B. You know, the other big bonus account I always say, usually in the academic side is, you're probably gonna have a true government 457B. Um, we know that there are other non-governmental 457Bs that require a little bit more research to them, but in the in the government side, a 457B is a bonus 403B account. So you're getting a whole nother account for tax deferred growth. So again, another thing that you're not gonna see listed there, which is why we always tell our, our physicians when they're analyzing the, these different roles, right? get us the actual benefits package. Let's walk through that, let's see what that looks like. Uh, okay, much better match, much stronger you know, fringe benefits, and that's sometimes what we label as like disability, life insurance, things of that nature. But the overall retirement package should give you another benefit, not always, right? It doesn't have to play out that way. We, we've seen some, some bad ones too, but for the most part, at least maybe give you an extra savings bucket, but usually you're seeing a pretty solid match somewhere in there. Um, but just don't forget to plug in that number as well when you're looking at the overall benefits from the academic role. Health insurance. I'm gonna be honest, this is where I get really jealous. Seeing some of the health packages from these academic uh, hospitals, it just, 
being a, a, a small business owner, when we have to go buy on the private market, uh, the price that we pay, but also the quality of some of those plans is not the best. So when I look through some of the benefit packages for our clients, I just go, my goodness, that's, that's just beautiful. It's beautiful. So don't forget to plug this in too, right? What does your health insurance look like? Um, now, the one unique thing that we actually see quite a bit with some of the, the very large um, groups is because the health insurance is so good, we might not ever get access to an HSA, right? Because there's not really a high deductible option because the plan's just that strong. I, we'll, we'll make do, all right? We'll be okay with that. So just don't forget to look through your total benefits. And now we're saying health insurance because that's usually your big, biggest number, right? But you're probably gonna have some pretty darn good dental insurance. You're probably gonna have some good vision insurance as well. The overall benefits package, and this is where we, we kind of label these as our fringe benefits, right? Um, the overall health insurance could be much stronger um, with much better access to maybe some of the better hospital systems too because you're probably working in one of the larger better hospital systems so again a number you're not going to see show up perfectly on a line item but even the premiums that you pay compared to maybe some private practices even though you may still have a premium it's probably much smaller for a much higher plan so and then some will see actually they just cover it outright so Pay attention to all your benefits, your your fringe benefits, your health insurance, your, your dental insurance, your uh, vision insurance. Those are items that need to be included in that total, that total benefits package. I almost said total salary, but total benefits package. One of the benefits of working with Gen X and Gen Y physicians day in and day out is we go through a lot of the same life cycles together. And one of those life cycles is having kids starting a family. And one big benefit you get on your side is just FMLA, right? That's one benefit that um, we, we tend to forget, right? Family and Medical um, Leave Act. It's, it's, it's another one that's very hard to put a number to, right? But these are just little benefits that still have a huge effect on that final decision. Now, FMLA, it can be outside of the academic world is right or the academic world as well but just the overall security of your job um you know certain states actually will pay income too so just keeping keeping the understanding of your entire benefits package um fmla is just one big benefit that we kind of overlook sometimes so make sure again you're including those other types of benefits in your overall um, research on pros and cons to that academic role Next up is just your CME, right? Your continuing medical education allowance. I always get that one called up. Um, but just another benefit, right? If you're, if you're, and, and again, not this one is not limited to just the academic world. This can also, we, we do see this in private practices, but just having someone pay for those, paying for the travel to those, these are all benefits that go a long way. So having that extra CME in there can go a long way. Um, this is, you can even take this further, right? Sometimes it's just how they're paying for your, your medical malpractice. There are lots of benefits that we, we sometimes lose track of in that academic world, um, but just having them cover medical malpractice. Um, some private practices, they may not do it or not the full extent, or they didn't have tail or they, you know, wh whatever the example would be on, on, on where you're in your career from a medical malpractice uh, coverage, you're, you're usually seeing a stronger uh, form of it in the academic world. So don't forget about benefits such as CME. And, and next up, really just building on that CME topic is just the ability to speak at lectures, right? It's We, we usually see more of our academic physicians are being paid to speak um, at different events. Um, I'm not smart enough to know why that is. I'm sure you watching this video probably understand why that's more common, um, but just another good benefit, right? And if you're getting paid 1099 income, don't forget about that solo 401k. Uh, so you could even get an extra savings bucket out of it. So. Again, benefits that we always like to keep an eye on to make sure that um, it's not as simple as, you know, salary of X versus salary of Y. The underlying benefits package can sometimes have a much larger effect than what we would think, uh, which is why I said early on in the video, it's one of my favorite things to do is actually look through the overall benefits package. Uh, now, we trust our, our, our attorneys to actually go through the, the legal technical jargon inside of there but from a benefits package you know we, we can be pretty dangerous there looking through things and saying hey big value add here not as so good here uh you know vice versa so just pay attention to all those items whether it's cme speaking at lectures all good benefits to have on your side again not just limited to the academic side but probably a better way to describe it is a little bit more common on the academic side 
last but not least, peace of mind. Being in a larger academic hospital, much larger balance sheet. Uh, when we're recording this, we're, we're still going through a pandemic, so uh, we kind of saw just how things worked from a salary perspective. Now, certain things did get shaken up a little bit, whether it was pay slowed for a little bit, maybe it was employer matches stopped for a little bit, but from my side, working with, you know, call it 80 physician households, um, you had more effects on the private side for our clients than we did on the academic side. Academic side still had some tweaks to it, but not as much as the private side did. Now, most of them got back to normal relatively quickly, which is a, a great thing. But that peace of mind of being with a larger hospital, again, can go a, a very long way. Um, it doesn't mean that it's flawless, right? You, you still have seen crazy things happen, but um, one other aspect to build in there is just a little bit better peace of mind, I think, on the academic side of uh, the, the physician world. And there you have it. Important considerations for our physicians in the academic world. That's not all of them, but it's some big ones to keep in mind because it goes a lot further than just, you know, my X salary uh, compared to Y salary, you know, assuming we're kind of comparing academic to a private. So all good things to keep in mind. The dollar value can change. Sometimes some of these may not pertain, right? It doesn't mean that all of them pertain to the academic world. Um, some of them may be even better than what we said, but always understand you got to go deeper than just the salary, right? You got to look through that whole contract. You got to look through the whole benefits package. I hope this was helpful. At least gives you some things to, to think through next time you're, you're making this big decision. But as always, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next video.